God is good. He's faithful. But there's something you got to do to get anything. There's a price to pay. It's called cooperate. People want things from God, but they ain't willing to cooperate. Now, you got to remember, faith is the currency of heaven. So without faith, you don't get nothing. But it takes cooperation to build faith, so you get things released. The Bible says after you've completed the assignment, God releases his promises, not before. See, so many people want so many things from God, but they ain't getting them. Well, why hasn't this happened? Why isn't that to him? Because you keep blowing it. You keep continuing doing your will. You know, the Spirit gave me a message this morning, and I found it quite interesting. And it's something that I had discussed, and, uh, and it's about idols. And it's, the, the message is called idol marriage. Everyone say idol marriage. That means people are married to idols and don't even know it. How many know you can be the worst idol? See, when there's a marriage in something, same thing in regular marriage, there's a covenant. And when people are married to idols, they have a covenant with them. Well, I never made a covenant. You don't have to make the covenant. It's automatic. Does everybody get it? It is a covenant to idols. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Well, we're going to expose some of this stuff today and break it off. Because it's essential. Because God is trying to not only awaken his people, but get them in a position where they can battle, have victory, be free, and be blessed. I'm going to share something that some people's idol is their own sickness. They thrive on their sickness. They spend more time in their sickness than they do in the presence of God. I mean, there are people, I'm, I'm driving uh, to church, man, they're out there buffing up those cars, repainting the house, cutting the lawn. I, and that's all I'm seeing is idle, 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 idle. And a day they should be assembling. Idle. And Deuteronomy 4, in verse 15, please. Listen, any can, anything can become an idol, a business, a, a ministry, anything. Anything that a person puts before God's will. Now, God's will is associated with God's time. The covenant of idols is idolatry. It's called idolatry, or what we call idol marriage. Anything that is desire before the righteousness and presence of God is an idol. That means there's another desire. That means it's lust. Lust. Living under satanic torment. Never able to get what you want the way you want it. That's a covenant. Does everybody get it? In verse 15, let's speak it together. Take careful what? Heed to yourselves, for you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at Harab out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly and make yourselves a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, or the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the air the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground or the likeness of any fish that is in the water beneath the earth. And take heed lest you lift your eyes to heaven. And when you see the sun, the moon, and the stars, and all the hosts of heaven, you feel driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord your God has given to all peoples under the whole heaven as a what? heritage. But the Lord has taken you from the, and brought you out of the iron furnace out of Egypt. Now, Egypt is the world. To be his people and inheritance as you are this day. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes and swore that I would not cross over the Jordan 
and that I would not enter the good land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. Now, this is Moses, who, and because he struck the rock instead of spoke to it, the Lord said, you can't cross over. Much is given, much is required. So he wasn't going to cross over into the land promised to his people. But he didn't care. He was going home. I mean, come on, let's get real. Verse 22. But I must die in this land. I must not cross over the Jordan. But you shall cross over and possess that good land. Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord, your God, which he made with you. And make for yourselves carved images in a form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire and a jealous God. Again, these people were married to idols. They were married to what? Idols. Where there's a marriage of idols, there's a covenant. How many people have given testimony that they've made covenant with the powers of darkness to become famous and rich. They sold their souls out so they can live a grand life here, not realizing about the life that's after it. It's much better than this place. Amen? Go to Colossians 3, please. Verse 3. You know, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And that's lack of knowing the truth, lack of knowing what's really influencing people. Let me tell you, if you could pull a zipper and un unveil and open up all the spiritual realm, you'd freak out. You wouldn't believe what is attached to you, assigned to you, promoting you, or what you're feeding. Or what you're married to. Verse 3, let's speak it. He says, for you died and your life is what? And your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your what? Your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is what? All idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek, nor Jew, circumcised, nor uncircumcised. Now, circumcised means covenant. In other words, they have a covenant. Uncircumcised is an uncovenant person. They have no covenant with the living God. Does everybody get it? Is everybody okay? So, one, uh, now there's a physical circumcision, amen, that was done to the male, and that was according to the laws in the Old Testament. But it, it's not a matter of physical circumcision now. Amen? It's a heart circumcision. We're to be circumcised of heart. That means we have a covenant with the living God. And it should be very important to people. People don't take it seriously. Hallelujah. So where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in what? In all. Put to death desires of the world, flesh and flesh, and don't become uncircumcised or, or breaking covenant because of desires of the lust or get involved with idle marriage. Acts 15, verse 15. Many people would rather die than get free. And they think they're free by living the way they're living. They call freedom a false freedom. But there's only one freedom, and that's in Christ. 
Other than that, it's just a life of bondage. Amen? People think that doing certain things is going to free them. Only Christ can free us. And it's only the presence of God that keeps us free in the truth. 1515, let's go for it. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written, speak it with me, verse 16. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins. I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord. What's he going to rebuild? The tabernacle so the world can seek and see mankind, uh, uh, seek the Lord. Even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things, know, known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore, I, I will judge that we will, should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God, but that we write to them to abstain from the things, what? Polluted by what? Idols. So idols will bring a pollution from sexual immorality, from things strangled, and from and fr and the form of blood. For Moses has had thr throughout many generations those who preach him in every city being read in the synagogues in every Sabbath. Then it is pleased to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul, Barbarius, namely Judas, who was also named Barbius and Silas, leading men among the brethren. Now this is powerful because in this he says, I will, will take, I will, I, I, I'm going to take the bride off of the earth. Jesus is going to come. He's going to call him up from the earth. And then he's going to return with them. In other words, he's going to fulfill the Feast of Trumpets. And he's going to return with him and establish, and then there'll be atonement, which will be shed blood, which we call the uh, Jezreel Valley or Jezebel Valley, whatever you want to call it. Armageddon, same thing. And there'll be war, and blood will be shed. It says that the blood will rise to the uh, horse's bridle. That's a lot of blood. And then the Lord will take his bride and his military and his army and so forth and return with them. Then he will establish the tabernacle so that the world can see, and he will reign for 1,000 years. We will have a glorified body. We'll be different. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, he says, my covenant will be with those that do not associate with polluted idols. Put it, now, a polluted idol, which is a, 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 anything that pollutes or interferes or contaminates the will of God, the timing of God, the desires of God. It's putting their agenda before their assignment agenda to be about the Father's business. Does everybody get it? I'm going to say that again. They put their agenda before their assignment agenda of the Father's business. Or th there's another word that I want to say. They compromised the Father's agenda to put their agenda first. They do what? They compromise. In other words, they, there's a false reasoning involved to trying to convince themselves that they're doing okay or they're doing the right thing or they're not doing the wrong thing or they're not interfering with God's will, but they really are. In Luke 14, verse 25, Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not, what? Hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. What was he saying? 
You need to break those idle marriages. Does everybody get it? Those are idle marriages. Listen, I'm married, but it's not an idol. I love my wife, but she's not my idol. I respect her. I honor her. But I look at her as a child of the Most High God and a daughter of the Creator before I look to her as my wife. She's his, not mine. Does everybody get it? And this is, this is how marriages are all messed up. Because they become idols to the spouse. And they live and they die and they do everything because of the spouse instead of what God says. They push God aside. Is everybody okay? They do not, you and I are not to allow relationships to become idol marriages. Because you're never able to fulfill your destiny. Never. It will cut it off and stop it all the time. You'll fulfill your own destiny, not his. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Isaiah 2, verse 5. O oh, house of Jacob, come and let us what? Walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken your people, the house of Jacob, because they are filled with eastern ways. They are, they are soothsayers like the Philistines. They are pleased with the children of foreigners. Their land is also full of silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land is also full of what? Idols. They worship the work of their what? Own hands. Oh, look what I've done. That which their own fingers have made. People bow down, and each man humbles himself. Therefore, do not forgive them. <laughs> do not what? Forgive them. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. So as he warns us, he says, man, the, the land is full of idols. If, you know, if you, people don't realize because we've been born in this realm and in the Babylonian system, but if you look at all the, the buildings downtown that are all governmental, everyone has a demonic logo. Every single one has some sort of statue of an idol. Every one. 2 Timothy 3, in verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, are we in the last days? Perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. Why? Because they're idols. They're married to themselves. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters. These are all individuals that are married to idols. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal despisers of good. Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power and freedom, and from such people turn away. He said, these are the sort that creep into households and make captives of not only gullible women, but gullible men, loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. In other words, they are reconnecting individuals to idols, Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In other words, they can never be free because they're married to so many idols. Now, Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses. So did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifested to all as theirs also was. These are uncircumcised. In other words, without covenant. No covenant with Christ because of their 
association and marriage to idols. Many of them are involved in the entertainment, sports. Well, I mean, I see people talk more about sports than they do God. Fame, self-accomplishments, all of these things associated with false idols. There's always that thought that comes, what about me? What about me? Hallelujah. 1 Samuel 17, verse 33. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine and fight with him, for you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Well, that was encouraging. <laughs> but David said to Saul, your servant used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or a bear came out and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth, and when it arose against me, I cut, I caught it <laughs> by the beard and struck it and did what? Killed it. Your servant is also both lion and bear, killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised, he calls him an individual that has no covenant with God. This un uncovenant individual, Philistine, will be like one of them. Sin has defied the armies of the living God. Does everybody see that? Moreover, David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to say, David, go, and the Lord be with you. <laughs> okay, convince me. Go to verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Now, this is powerful. First of all, David has got a covenant with God. What he did is he put a demand on the anointing by what he spoke. Because he's always, he was already anointed, right? But he, he put a demand on the anointing of what he spoke. Why? Because he knew he had a covenant. See, people don't realize they, they're covenant with the Creator. They take it nonchalantly. They're always looking at the things that are not even covenant with God instead of realizing that you have a covenant with God Almighty, just like David. And David approached an uncircumcised, Military huge dude. Listen, David destroyed Goliath not with the stone, but with his words. Does everybody get it? With his words. He already beat him. Yeah, I mean, come on, what's the odds of somebody swinging a thing and hitting him right where it counts? You have to be practicing that every day. <laughs> it was the anointing that struck him. And, but where did David's words bet that were released struck him? In his thoughts. He see, Goliath was all about himself. Goliath was the idol of the Philistines. Goliath was his own idol. Does everybody get it? David tore down the idol of the Philistines. But he put a demand on the anointing. By the words he spoke. Listen, it's time you put a demand on the anointing, but you got to be right with God. Amen? You can't just say something and expect it to happen if you ain't right with God. 
It's just because it doesn't happen instantly doesn't mean it ain't coming. You are special. doesn't make you prideful. David wasn't prideful. He was bold. Did he make mistakes? Oh, you betcha. But the word says he was a man after God's heart. Acts 7.51. Now, was Paul an anointed individual? Paul the Apostle? Amen? <laughs> I love what he does here. This dude, oh, I think it was uh, Peter also. Timothy, all of them were anointed. Acts 7.51, is everybody there? All right, let's speak this. Hallelujah! You, he calls the dude. You stiff-necked, uncircumcised, in other words, you got no covenant, in hearts and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets, your fathers, did not persecute, did not persecute, and they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. He's talking to who? The Pharisees and Sadducees. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. Those were demons that were in them. But being filled with the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Lord, look, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. They cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of the young man who was Stephen uh, named Saul. They took his stuff, they laid it there in, in, at the feet of Saul. Does everybody understand that? And was calling on God, saying, and, and, Stephen, and, they, and they stoned him, and Stephen was calling on God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he what? Fell asleep. So we got Saul, who was anointed prior, I mean, you know, after this, but he was first Saul before he came what? Paul. Amen. So he's the one that approved Stephen's death. Does everybody get it? That's why the apostles were like freaked out when Saul got saved. He had to get slammed off the horse and become Paul. And then when he showed up, they were like, yo, man, this dude is uncircumcised. But he wasn't. He was now had a covenant with God Almighty. And God anointed him. And of course, he said, listen, he's gonna, I'm going to send him to a place. He's going to do a lot of suffering for me. But I have called him and chosen him. Did God call you? Are you called? If you're in this room, you're called. Don't reject the call. It's a terrible thing to do. Amen? That's why he says, fulfill your calling. These men became uncircumcised, even, even though they were circumcised by tradition. Because they became married to idols, their authority, their seats and positions of authority. Amen? They were praised in places. They had the best seats in the houses. Proverbs 2, verse 10. When wisdom enters your heart, and knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Discretion will preserve you. Understanding will keep you. To deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, from those who leave the path of uprightness, to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in perversity of wickedness, whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths, to deliver you from the immoral man or woman, from the seductress who flatters with their words, 
who forsakes the companion of the youth and forgets the what? The covenant. See, when people fall into fornication, they forget their covenant. Forgets the covenant of their God. And their house leads down to what? Death and their paths to the dead. None who go their way return, nor do they regain the path of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep to the paths of righteousness. For the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfruitful will be uprooted from it. And we see that happening right now. Many people have fallen from the faith, have fallen away into their own idols, reconnected themselves to mar uh, and married idols, not following truly, and not fulfilling their, appoint their appointment, which God has called them to do. Matthew 13, 36. And Jesus said to the sent the multitude away and went into the house. And the disciples came into him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows a good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. And the harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned into the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, he who has ears to hear. Let him what? Hear. He didn't say listen. He said what? Hear. Amen. So there's a separation between the circumcised and the uncircumcised. Not physical, spiritual. Those who maintain covenant and those who break covenant. Amen. Those who are uncircumcised are not walking in covenant. Those who are circumcised are what we call they are walking in a the covenant. They maintain the righteous covenant. Not married to idle marriage. How many of you know that you can have a, a desire or goal that can be an idol? Well, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. What does the Bible say? If the Lord wills. Amen? If the what? Lord wills. I mean, all of us have some sort of desire to do something for God. Amen? And there's nothing wrong with that. But so many times people put it as an idol and lose and begin to compromise their relationship. And when conviction comes, they can't get it. You and I should be looking for conviction in everything we do. Lord, is this acceptable? Amen? The Bible says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all things will be added. Acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways. Well, these individuals that are married to idols have compromised that. They've fallen from that. And their idols now, their God. I see it all over. I'm going to close at Romans 1, 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being up understood by the uh, things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without what? Excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, or were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image 
made like corruptible men, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things, idols. Therefore God has also given them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their body among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. And that's what we see in the world today, all over. People are still fighting for their lives instead of fighting for the life of Christ, unable to surrender, staying in a mode of survival all the time. I see so many people begging on the streets, it grieves my spirit. And when you want to try to help them, they don't want your help, they just want your money. Come on, I got a place for you, man. There's a place. There's places for you. Come on and get help. No, I just want the money. I'll bring you to some. I'll, come on, let's go. I'll, we'll go get something to eat. No, just give me the money. What are they trying to do? They're feeding their idol that they're married to. Amen. For God has given us wisdom and discernment and understanding. We have an anointing and a covenant. For we know all things through Christ. Amen. He makes a way there seems to be no way. <laughs> There's one other thing I'm going to share with you. One of the things that connect us to idols is labels. Labels. Labels that we bring on ourselves. So I want to speak just the first prayer paragraph of the label breaking prayer, prayer but I, I want to encourage you all of you to speak this prayer today. But I want you to repeat after me just the first paragraph, if you would please. Amen? Are you ready? My Lord God Almighty, I truly take your word as the source, protector, and provider of all life. As a covenant child and offspring of Christ Jesus, I accept, believe, and appropriate your promises into my life, my words, my conduct, and my worship. I stand before you this day and expose all hidden things in my life that have caused me to commit transgressions, iniquities, disobedience, rebellion, evil fellowship, evil desires, through labels, placed upon my life by inheritance, my words, thoughts of agreements, or words of other people. These labels have promoted deception, pride, fear, sickness, addictions, perversionness, bondage, and limitations on my life that put parts of my soul and captivity. I take authority as your child and covenant holder, and I break these labels and every associated spirit with them off of my life and send them to the pit in Jesus' name. I decree as a new creation in Christ, old things pass away, and all things are created new today by the power of my words in Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.